The vocal minority of the One Piece fandom is a nauseating hellhole that doesn't seem to take a back pedal or touch grass. On this channel, if you look at my first few videos, they are about One Piece. They're not well made, but the reason why I stopped covering One Piece is because of the discourse around it. Take a look at this comment on my Boa Hancock theory for good measure. It was a bad take, which was good in my opinion considering the events taking place at that time. For a young creator who was just taking his first steps into the medium, this, coupled with the toxicity of the r one Piece subreddit and several One Piece Facebook groups, was enough of an indication that I should just stop covering this anime altogether. It was a decision that filled me with serious pain because One Piece, is the reason why I started this channel. I like constructive criticism, which regular commenters on this channel provide. But outright bullying, especially on the internet, is something that I generally don't vibe with because even if you have the heart of Griffith, the words really get to you. The first thing, everybody likes to think they know everything, but here's the problem. Even if they do know everything, you cannot possibly expect me to admire them when they're shoving their opinions in my face. Back in the day, there were a lot of One Piece groups on Facebook that were aimed at proper discussion and discourse. Their about the page sections gave them off to be this amazing place where you can have civil discussions and normal conversations. What do you think might have happened? The vocal minority stepped in with their edginess and began calling me names on even the most benign of things. For example, if I praise Zoro, which is a totally justifiable praise because he's that guy, I get called a Zoro lard. You get what I'm trying to say. If I praise Hancock, I get called out to be a simp. I don't know why, because she is more than her character design. Another thing that the vocal minority did was to eventually degenerate the discussions down to NSFW images of various characters. Now there are two things happening here. One, only the heated and edgy comment sections are getting the traction, and the posts that are actually aimed at discourse are either being hijacked by such people, or are completely ignored or not even approved by the moderators. And two, the extreme NSFW R34-esque images are the ones getting the attention, and the people who actually make normal artwork, even if it is a bit NSFW, are getting ignored or the OP is being harassed for their art. Now, you might think that these are meme groups, but if you're a One Piece fan, there are chances that you'd find such insanity taking place on Reddit subs, Facebook pages, Twitter, and whatnot. This creates a cycle where people who want to have a normal conversation have to become edgy or try to become edgy to make their voice heard. This further leads to a cycle of aggressive confidence where two or three people are engaged in conversation, but each party is trying to get their point across in a way that undermines the others' point of view. There is no civility and the only winner in the competition would be one who gets the most heart reacts. The ones with the hahas get bullied, berated, and get called names. On Reddit, the conversations in the One Piece subreddits look intellectual, but if you probe further, they are pretentious word salads. This is a term someone commented on one of my AI scripted videos. They're word salads that remind me of the average Redditor skit by the slappable jerk. If you haven't seen those videos, please do so so you'll understand what I'm trying to say. The next point that I want to emphasize on ties in from the previous point. One Piece fans really love One Piece, and their cultish affection for it enables them to berate anyone who doesn't share their same passion. What they tend to forget is that people are different across the board, and that what might resonate with you might not resonate with another person. I have recommended One Piece to other people as well, but my general rule of thumb is to make them watch till the walk to Arlong Park scene. That's it. If that doesn't catch their attention, nothing in the coming chapters would make them continue watching, so it is best not to berate them for it. In addition to this near cultish affection, One Piece fans also exhibit a near godlike reverence for the author Ichiro Oda, referring to him as Goda, God plus Oda. Now Ichiro Oda is a very good author and has created a world that makes me laugh, cry, and get bewildered all at the same time. One scene from the manga that I absolutely love and go back to over and over again is the Kairos crying scene from the Dressrosa arc. It is so influential that I've covered it twice on my channel. However, that doesn't disregard the fact that Ichiro Oda is a human being who has his tastes and preferences. So one common criticism about Oda is the way he draws women. Especially after the time skip, he draws the female characters of the series with unrealistic proportions, which I personally do not like. However, if I so as mention this point and call out Oda, 
on his fan service, then instead of a discussion, all I get are people coming after me and calling me Vogue, among other very nice things. If I have a problem with the art style and everybody else doesn't, that's fine. That is my problem and I can very well defend my point of view on why I think this is a valid criticism of Oda, as would anyone else who agrees with me. However, the problem here lies not in Oda, but his fans, who think that he wrote such a good story that no one else can disagree with any aspect of it. If you do disagree, then we will gang up on you for not agreeing with the point of view. This brings me to my last point. So this is something that is not just limited to the fandom in question but rather a multitude of fandoms which is why I've decided to put this at the very end. The main issues with power scaling arguments in anime are as follows. Number 1. Lack of consistent metrics. Anime often lacks well-defined consistent systems for quantifying and comparing characters' power levels. This leads to subjective and contradictory power scaling. So you cannot quantify whether Saitama's power levels are the same as Goku's or Luffy's. There isn't a handbook that can guide you on the proper way to quantify who is stronger. If there was, that would be a different story. The very subjective nature of anime leads to one fandom waging a useless raid war over another to prove their point. The online raid itself is a very sad thing to me because whenever such events do happen, I tend to think about these people's lives and how devoid of meaning they are for them to engage in such unnecessary wars. You could learn something new, read a book, or do something meaningful with that time. Number 2. Narrative focus over realism. Anime prioritizes dramatic storytelling over strict power level consistencies. Characters' abilities may fluctuate for plot purposes rather than adhering to a rigid scale. This is the reason why you cannot compare Naruto to any other character because his power levels change according to the plot. A similar case can be made for Goku and other characters. That's about it. Number 3. Subjectivity Power scaling is highly subjective with fans often basing arguments on personal interpretations, favorite characters, or incomplete information out right. In One Piece, the power levels of characters are often heavily debated. Luffy loyalists may argue that he is the strongest character in the series, citing his impressive feats of defeating powerful enemies like Kaido or Big Mom, and continuously expanding his abilities. In the process, they may downplay or dismiss the strength of other characters, giving their fans the title of a uh, lard. Now the title of who would win is an enticing subject and I get why some people who power scale characters do such a thing. But it should never go out of hand and be the only thing in life that you care about. I believe if there is any proper conclusion to this, it's that anime is a diverse medium and fandoms are just as diverse. The places that I discuss should be places where fans should come to relax and de-stress from their day, not gain more stress because of the vocal minority in the process of seeing that constant bickering. As far as social media is concerned, it is a good outlet for people to exhibit their free speech, but it is important to be mindful when playing with the algorithm. If you are constantly seeing negative stuff on these mediums, it further leads you down a rabbit hole of negativity. So be safe and sorry for ranting so much. Thanks for watching.